Hello, my name's Amy and I'm a data manager at Rush, which is a Swiss pharmaceutical company with offices all around the world. Before Rush, I studied physics at the University of Hertfordshire, where I did a year in industry at Rush halfway through my degree. Hi, and I'm Xenia, and I'm also a data manager at Rush. As data managers, we're responsible for ensuring that clinical trial data is collected and clean for analysis. Before Rosh, I studied biology at the University of Manchester, and I found out about Rosh also doing a placement here. At Rosh, thousands of different people work together from all over the world to create innovative medicines that help millions of patients globally. We also work hard to produce diagnostic tests so doctors are in a stronger position to help their patients. Today, we're here to guide you through how a specific medicine makes its way from the bench at our laboratories around the world to the bedside of a patient at home. Who's involved? How long does it take? And how does it link to what you're learning at school? Let's start with a quiz to see where you think we are in terms of the general health of people today. What do you think is the life expectancy in the world today? Do you think it's 50 years, 60 years or 70 years? Here's some time to think. It's 70 years. Well done if you guessed it correctly. The average worldwide life expectancy is over 70 years. That could be surprising, but the numbers vary quite a bit across the globe. The map shows us the differences from country to country. Take a look at this graph showing us how life expectancy has increased over time. In the last 100 years, the medical industry has helped to double the average life expectancy. Pretty amazing, right? Let's see how you get on with these next questions. Here's some time to think. How did you do? It's clear from these answers that antibiotic resistance is a big problem. So what are antibiotic resistant bacteria? You may have covered some of this topic in your biology lessons at school. Don't panic if you haven't. Here's a rundown for you. It starts off with an invasion. Our bodies get invaded by bacteria every day. They're all around us. Our bodies constantly are fighting off infection. Luckily, they're pretty great at doing this but there are times when they need a helping hand. That's where antibiotics come in. Antibiotics are a type of medicine that will kill a specific type of bacteria. Provided you take the whole course, they will do a super job of getting you better. Remember, if you don't complete the course of antibiotics, there's a problem. You may feel well again, as your initial doses have killed most of the bacteria and your immune system can handle them again. But even if there are one or two left, they will quickly multiply and you'll be back to where you started. So it's important to finish the course to kill all the bacteria. So what is the problem? It seems to be working fine. Well, mutation is the problem. Sometimes the bacteria can mutate or change slightly. This means it no longer can be killed by the antibiotic that was designed to kill it. So whilst the antibiotic will kill off all the non-mutated bacteria, the new mutated strains are left and then can multiply, making people very unwell. So the race is on. Not only do we need to continue to develop antibiotics, we need to create a whole new type that can beat the resistant strains. If we don't, we will be looking at worrying statistics like deaths in the millions in the near future. So what happens once we've made the antibiotic? Or any drug for that matter? How do we test it and make sure it's safe and then get it into hospitals? There are three main phases the drug goes through the discovery phase, the development phase, and commercialization. First, we need to finish the discovery phase. These are the steps shown in blue. The research team has decided which disease to tackle and synthesized some successful chemicals that can combat the disease. Great, now we need to be sure that the drug is safe and works as expected in animals. Once that is done, our chemical engineers can start to think about how to scale up production so it can be manufactured en masse. A really crucial step is filing for an IND. This is an application for an investigational new drug. 
Here, an independent regulatory body, for example, the FDA in the USA or the MHRA in the UK, check that the drug won't put any people involved in clinical trials at too much risk. We can't move on to the development phase until this is done. The development phase links closely to what you will learn in school. This is where the clinical trials take place. In phase one, very low doses of the new drug are given to healthy people to check for side effects. This trial is usually quite small and takes only several months. If the drug is looking safe, we can move on to phase two. This happens in about seven out of 10 cases. In phase two, we test the drug on a small number of patients to check whether it actually does treat the disease. This takes several months to two years. If phase two shows us the drug is safe and effective, we can move to phase three, which unfortunately only happens in three out of 10 cases. Here, we test on lots of patients and figure out the optimum dose for the drug over a longer time, between one to four years. Finally, we get to commercialization, where we file a new drug application. This is where the regulatory authority, like the FDA or MHRA, review all of our data and give us the go-ahead to release the drug to the market. Now we can make sure the entire world knows about the drug by writing about it in medical journals and scientific magazines, explaining to doctors how it works. From there, the doctors can prescribe the medicines to patients that need them. So, there you go. Now you know the steps involved in getting a drug from bench to bedside. That was a lot of information. It's good to see how what you're learning at school fits in with the work we do at Roche. Time to see how much you've picked up by completing this crossword. You might have it printed out, or if not, just jot it down on a piece of paper. When you're done, see if you can find the key term by rearranging the letters in the yellow boxes. This will be the ultimate test of your knowledge of bench to bedside. Pause the video now to give yourself time to complete the crossword. Did you get the key term? It's resistance, the problem we're facing with those pesky bacteria. Now that you know how a particular medicine makes it from bench to bedside, let's take a look at some of the people involved in getting it there. It's easy to label most people working at Roche as a scientist, but in fact, each of their jobs are very different and involve a different part of the bench to bedside journey. Let's find out more about some of our different colleagues from around the company. This is Farzana. She's a global study manager, and she said this about her job. I test new treatments in clinical trials for cancer and help deliver the results to governments all around the world. There's an opportunity to do this role in most countries, so this is a great job for traveling and living abroad. Laura is a safety scientist, and she says, I'm all about patient safety. I look at data from clinical trials and listen to feedback from patients. This enables me to keep an up-to-date profile of the safety of my product. I also write the safety sections on documents that accompany my medicines. Theodore is a scientist and he said, using a computer, I design molecules which would become a medicine. Then I think of ways to make them, like a recipe in a kitchen. I follow this recipe, prepare the material and then test whether it works as intended. Analyzing these results, I can learn what molecule to make next. Gwyn is head of franchise marketing. He said, when Rush successfully develop a new medicine, I make sure it can be sold and distributed effectively so it reaches the entire UK healthcare system. Rahima is a safety scientist. She said, I'm responsible for developing a medicine from the point it's tested in humans. At this point, larger clinical trials can be planned. I mainly look at the bigger picture and plan how I can take the medicine from the lab to the clinic, looking for countries and hospitals that can test our medicines. That's it from us at Rush. We hope this has helped you to see how what you're learning at school feeds into the work that we do. Budding scientists like you are essential to continue the work we're doing. Thank you for listening.